Hello, everyone. I am so excited to welcome you to the marvelous monthly release for December. And we also have some inks we're going to talk about in just a minute. But first, we're going to have a look at what we're using today. We're using the Build a Garden Blossoming Freesia in the Stamp, Dye, and Stencil Set. We'll get our stamp wheel into place as long as, as well as, not as long as, as well as a piece of cardstock that is seven and three eighths by seven and three eighths. And we're getting that into place. We're getting our stamp into position. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the fresh dye ink in jet black. So the reason I did this, a couple reasons, and I always wonder why people choose either the fresh dye ink in jet black or the obsidian. So a couple things here. I chose the fresh dye ink in jet black because I was going to be using a yellow tone and I was didn't feel like heat setting for some reason um, this time. So I just wanted a quick drying ink that would not smear. I didn't have to wait um, and I didn't have to be in danger of a lighter tone because I'm also using pastel sunrise in the beginning um, of the first uh, blossoming freesia. And I wanted to make sure the lighter tones didn't smear with the ink. So just to be sure, I used my jet black fresh dye ink because I know it's going to dry quick. I also wanted to stamp multiples of these because we are going to cover the front of an A2 panel with dimension of blossoming freesia. And I didn't know how many I'd need, so I wanted to stamp four. That's why I had such a large piece of cardstock in my stamp wheel. I did have to adjust the stamp. I stamped twice, as you can see, diagonal from each other. Then I picked it up, I situated it, and then I can stamp diagonal from each other again so that I can have my four total. I didn't think it would take more than four, and I figured if I had some left over, I could make multiple cards, I could do different designs. It never hurts to have some extra beautifully blended pieces in your stash. So we're going to begin with stencil number one, and we're using Warm Sunshine for our uh, yellow tone. And I'm so glad that I chose this tonality. Um, now we're in with Pastel Sunrise. I do have to tell you, Pastel Sunrise only makes an appearance in the first of the Blossoming Freesias. I only color one of these in on camera as well uh, because it's all the same steps and besides Pastel Sunrise, the same color. So here I show you Warm Sunshine, Pastel Sunrise, Burnt Red, and then I will move on to the bottom part of stencil number one. We're still on stencil one, so the bottom, and we're beginning the process again. But what I learned um, on the first one is I really, really liked uh, the warm sunshine with the burnt red. Like that's where my heart just was happy. When I saw those two colors blend together, I was super stoked. And I don't often put reds and yellows together. Um, I do oranges and yellows, but not really reds and yellows. So I had a good play with this. And then I really wanted to go darker. I really wanted to emphasize the difference between that yellow and that red with that mahogany bark. So super excited. This was my new trio of colors that I am using through the rest of the project. Now we're on stencil number two. This is the third section here. And again, we have warm sunshine. We'll get that put into place. And you kind of see me kind of pondering as I'm blending a little bit. And the reason is, is I am looking at the layering guide and I'm kind of following along where it's lighter, where it's darker, just for a layout. And I do that on the first one and then I kind of have a go, a play, uh, which means I just throw color out there and see where it lands and see what I like. So I hope you have a play as well. So I'm going to now finish up with my burnt red on this stencil section. And we will move on to stencil two on the bottom section there. So this is the fourth section for the blossoming freesia, which means we will have all the petals done at the end of this. And again, we're starting out with that warm sunshine, that beautiful, beautiful bright yellow, 
such a pretty, pretty yellow, one of my favorites. Then we're going to come in with the burnt red. I do recommend cleaning your stencil in between every color change. I don't do it here, but I highly recommend it. Um, A, you won't kind of get red on your yellow blending brush, um, the first one, but I was just having fun and the color was blending beautifully and I was just going with it. I was embracing the color and I had so much fun. So for the section in the middle here, I first went with Mountain Mist for the flower centers. Then down on the bottom, I did Mountain Mist and Volcano Lake. On the later freesias, I went with Lagoon and Emerald. This was a little bit too light for me. In the end, as you can see here, in the end, they are all darker. I don't use the stems. So here are the blossoming freesias all cut out. Now we're going to have kind of a fidget and a play and see where they fit best. I also die cut the word friend out of black cardstock and the shadow out of white cardstock. So I'm going to put all my foam tape on there. I didn't make you watch me put all of the foam tape on there. As you know, I love to put lots, as you can see. So everything is nice and sturdy. And we're going to get that put into place. As you can see, the stems are hanging off. I really wanted the focal the, of the whole panel to be these beautiful, beautiful freesias. So I really didn't want the stem kind of on there taking away from it. Now you could really place these on there and have the stems work with each other, kind of parallel each other. They, they will work beautifully together. Um, but for this particular project, I was happy with this. And I wanted to show you, you could stop here. You could just put one in the corner, put a sentiment, you have a beautiful card. But we're, we're gonna continue on. We're gonna be tough, we're gonna keep going. So here I'm kind of laying things out and seeing, I didn't want the freesias to all be in the same orientation and to all look the same. I wanted to kind of turn them around and fit as many as I could in. But again, trying to keep those stems off my project as much as possible. Um, I really wanted the flower to be the focal. So I'm trimming it off. And of course, I'm not going to waste that beautiful, beautiful piece. I'm going to use it elsewhere. So I'm just trimming off the extra. And you don't have to trim off the extra if you don't want to. You can create um, a smaller focal panel on a larger card base. So you could do like a four and a half by six and a half. Um, on a five by seven card and you could have kind of the stems going off onto the sides. So there are so many options with this technique that I really love that really gives you kind of creative license to have lots of different looks using the same supplies, which I love when I have techniques like that. So here, showing you again, you could stop here. You can put your sentiment. You could just put one more in there and leave that top section open so that you have, you know, that. But again, we're still going strong. I do like the friend where it is though. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this one into place. I'm gonna trim that off. And once we have that done, so now I'm gonna use some of the smaller pieces cause I could have used um, all of these really larger pieces and really filled that in there and put the sentiment in the center. This is another possible layout that you could have played with. So, and I think you can just have, I, there are wonderful sub sentiments on the stamp set, but I think you can go ahead with just the word friend. I think that says it all. So you don't always have to have a sub sentiment for your sentiment. So here I'm filling in kind of these pieces and I'm creating a focal kind of point to put my sentiment to let it also, the flowers are really the star of the show on this card in my opinion, but the sentiment also gets to be special and have its own kind of place that's built to hold it perfectly and it's built specifically for this sentiment. And of course, Emery Casey had to come in and put her seal or paw of approval on all of this, which she did. She approves. So I'm just using that jet black ink and a block to stamp the hello. 
and then we will put in the friend and Emery's back to make sure I'm not messing anything up. Um, I've got my tweezers here and I'm just kind of moving them around because I want to tuck the friend under the um, freesia. So I could have put it you know, flat against the panel, but I, I did, I wanted it to have dimension as well. So that's where we settled. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. Don't forget to check out the rest of the hop so you can see all the gorgeous projects. And we hope to see you in another video very, very soon. Until next time, my friends, happy crafting.